Today we take a jungle cruise and meet some monkeys who have no business being here. visit the Silver Springs in Florida, a prime tourist destination for the guys and gals of all ages. It's a jolly good time. Take an idyllic cruise on the water and see all the beasts of the wild, from the avian to the aquatic, like birds and the majestic sea cow, nature's own mermaid, or the big teeth of the alligators basking on the shore. A relaxing dip in the crystal clear water of the springs is sure to have you saying it's the bee's knees, so pack up the family and come visit Silver Springs, where the folks always say, you are welcome. Welcome to Silver Springs near Ocala, Florida. It's been a tourist destination for over a hundred years. The river still manages to attract visitors with its daily glass bottom boat tours. In the 1930s, before the state park was established though, visitors would rely on privately owned riverboats for adventurous jungle cruises. And out of all the riverboat tours, one man was ahead of all the rest. Enter Colonel Tui. The Colonel was always looking for ways to attract more customers to his Jungle Cruise, and in 1938, he had a fantastic idea. Some big cats from Hollywood are poking around for another spot to shoot the next big Tarzan film. I reckon if I release some monkeys onto an island, they would not only enhance the status of my own Jungle Cruise, but I also reckon some people might think, Them's the monkeys from that there Tarzan motion picture. And that's exactly what Tui did. He purchased six rhesus macaques from an animal dealer in New York. Tui found a small island in the river and released the macaques there. Later that same year, Tarzan Finds a Son was filmed and even though the movie didn't have any monkeys in it, the myth that the monkeys had escaped from the film set was created and to this day persists. Colonel Tui's jungle cruise included a monkey feeding and getting to see the primates up close. Tui originally released six of these rhesus macaques, but they disappeared. Thinking they were eaten by alligators, his solution was to buy six more. But the old colonel didn't realize that they could swim, and swim they did right off his island into the nearby forests. And as the years went by, their numbers grew, and Florida's monkey problem was born. Today, the entire Florida macaque population is estimated to be around 400. Given that they have lived here for over 80 years, you can probably guess that these monkeys have no issues surviving in Florida. Normally, Reese's macaques can be found in Central and Southeast Asia, which includes countries like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, Myanmar, Thailand, Afghanistan, Vietnam, and China, which gives them the widest geographic range of all primates, besides humans. In Florida so far, they have spread out of the Silver Springs area, and adults have been spotted over a hundred miles away in Tampa. While the Reese's macaque isn't the only kind of monkey in Florida, there are small colonies of vervet, squirrel, and spider monkeys in the state, those species aren't very aggressive, unlike the macaques. And while they typically keep to themselves, they do occasionally act aggressively towards people, usually to stake territory, protect their kids, or to steal food. But they are very adaptable, meaning that they survive well in different habitats. In their native range in Asia, you can find them in grasslands, forests, rivers, but especially in cities, where gangs of macaques take to the street to raid garbage cans and rob people of their dinner. The troops of Florida macaques, though, seem to be satisfied with the resources of the forest and stay away from the cities, but that could change as their population grows. But so far, they have survived and thrived in our ecosystem. Macaques may communicate with one another through a variety of ways. Facial expressions, body language, vocal sounds, and gestures are all ways that they indicate their mood, which is important for establishing dominance. Each group has a few males that act as troop leaders who protect the females and their infants from any potential threats. And the males are not afraid to put themselves in harm's way, like this one who I accidentally spooked and warned me away by jumping onto some branches and loudly shaking them. Within the females of the group, the younger females are more dominant than the older females, which is weird for primates because usually there's an older big mama somewhere in charge. 
the entire group works together to raise the young. Baby monkeys are called infants, and within the group, the mother and her sisters all work together to take care of a group of infants. It's been said that it takes a village, but for the Reese's macaque, it takes the troop. Macaques are old enough to start their own family at just four years old, and will live in upwards of 30 years. Because they reproduce so quickly, they've been used extensively in science. And now, a short list of scientific achievements made possible by the Reese's macaque. These monkeys are considered an introduced species, not necessarily invasive. The difference between an introduced and invasive animal is subtle but important. Invasive animals like our brown anoles and chameleons in other Wild Florida episodes displaced native wildlife, whereas introduced species might find a way to exist without causing any obvious major issues. The Reese's macaques mostly eat seeds and fruits, which puts them in competition with birds and various other small mammals like raccoons and rodents. But for the time being, it's not a big problem. But that doesn't mean it won't become a bigger issue in the future. I've also left out a very important detail about these animals, and that is within the Florida population, many of them carry a virus called herpes B. To the monkeys, it's no different than having chicken pox. It flares up and isn't fun for a week, and then it goes away. But if one of those monkeys were to bite a human in that time, that person could become infected, and herpes B has a very good chance of killing them. For some people, that's a good enough reason to remove them, but for the locals of Silver Springs, it might not be such an easy choice. This is Captain Nick. He's a local riverboat owner and tour operator, just like Colonel Tui back in the day. I actually chartered his boat to film the rhesus macaques, and he was quite upfront with his opinion as a local business owner on if the monkeys should be removed. Well, it would affect my tourism, I'm sure. Uh, also, uh, the people around here, I don't know if they would put up with that, but <laughs> it's been a big controversy for years, you know. I think the state's wanting to get rid of these guys, and uh, all the people here that enjoy seeing them uh, have the opposite uh, slant on it, you know, it's, we don't know what they're doing to the uh, economy or the ecosystem and uh, the state claims they do and they have to have some effect on it, but as far as me personally, uh, I think uh, tips I get on the trips is probably the big, big uh, financial deal. The locals might not want them gone. These monkeys are the cause of a weird situation playing out at Silver Springs. They've been here almost 100 years, but their presence here might be hurting the animals that do belong. But what do you think? Should the state remove the monkeys, or should they be allowed to stay? I want to know your opinion in the comments down below, and tell me what you think of this weird monkey business playing out at Silver Springs. No, I'm Zack Attack, this is the Reese's Macaque, and thanks for checking out what makes Florida so wild. <laughs>